Good afternoon. I'm Michael Sanders, and this broadcast is coming to you from the auditorium at Canterbury Woods in Pacific Grove. Uh, this afternoon, I'd like to play works by three of the great pillars of German classical music, Bach and Schumann and Beethoven, uh, an early masterpiece by Bach, and then individual movements from two great collections, uh, a cycle of pieces by Schumann and one of Beethoven's greatest piano sonatas, one of the movements from that. What these three works have in common is that in one way or another, they are all about departure, about leave-taking, about going away. And so are the pieces from the popular repertory that I will play in alternation with these works. So I'd like to begin with um, a song from the last musical that Lerner and Lowe wrote, uh, Camelot. This was uh, Robert Goulet's first Broadway role. He played uh, the knight Lancelot. And the song that he sang that brought down the house became his signature tune, really, for the rest of his performing career. In the musical, the situation is that uh, Lancelot, who is head of the Knights of the Round Table, and Queen Guinevere, married to King Arthur, have fallen in love. And they are torn by their loyalties toward the king on one hand and their illicit love for each other. At the beginning of the second act, they have been in torment over this love for a long time and uh, Guinevere begs Lancelot to leave her, to go away. And he answers, how could I leave you? Uh, uh, in what month, what time of year could I do that? Oh no, not in springtime, summer, winter or fall. Oh, never could I leave you at all. So here is the song, If Ever I Would Leave You, from Camelot by Lerner and Lowe. Thank you. 
Thank you. Now I'd like to turn to Bach. This is his capriccio on the departure of his beloved brother. This is a very early work. Um, there's some, in late, recent years, there have been some debate about just who is departing in this piece. But if it is his brother, uh, Johann Jakob Bach, three years older than he, uh, it must be, have been written when Johann Jakob left to take up a job as an oboe player in the King of Sweden's military band. And if that's the case, um, Bach at that time was 19. Uh, by this time, both his parents had died. They died within a year of each other. Uh, he was living with a different brother. And uh, this is not only one of his earliest surviving pieces, but the only piece, instrumental piece that we have of his that is specifically programmatic. In other words, it tells a story. You can tell it. It has something to do with the story from its title. Uh, but each of the six movements also tells part of the story. Uh, so I will tell you, as we go through, the, the names of each of the movements, and that should pretty much uh, clear up what is intended to happen in the, in the pieces. So, uh, um, the first movement uh, of this capriccio on the departure of his beloved brother is, it says, it's a presentation of the friends who gathered together and try to dissuade the brother from leaving. So you hear that in the pleading music that begins this piece. Now the second movement uh, has the friends now telling about all the dreadful things that may happen to the brother as he is uh, in foreign parts.
the next movement, the third movement, uh, portrays the lamenting of all the friends. Oh, this piece, sorry, this piece um, is unusual. Uh, Bach writes it only as a kind of skeleton with a few numbers indicating some of the harmonies, but with the suggestion that the performer has to fill in the missing parts. The fourth movement is the shortest, and it's the turning point in the, the cycle of six pieces. Um, in this, uh, the friends, seeing that they cannot change the mind of their friend, um, take leave of him and depart. fifth movement is called the aria of the post horn. Apparently the brother is traveling to Sweden in a mail coach and the uh, post horn 
is a trumpet that seems to have two notes an octave apart. So here we have a short introductory um, aria uh, or melody, the melody of the post horn. And the final movement, the sixth movement, is called Fugue in Imitation of the Post Horn. This is the first surviving uh, fugue of Bach, as far as we know. Thank you. 
Now here's another song from a musical. This is the last musical that uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein wrote, uh, The Sound of Music. The song that I'll play for you actually occurs twice in the musical. In the first act, the uh, children in the Trapp family have been taught by Maria to sing, apparently angelically, and um, they sing this song as a way of uh, saying good night to the guests who have come to visit Colonel Trapp. And the song reoccurs in the second act. By this time, Austria has been invaded by Germany, and it is um, essential that the whole family escape. They have to escape without being detected. And so they do this in the course of a performance. And as they sing this song, uh, one by one, the family members steal off the stage and out to the abbey from which Maria came. And then from there, they'll climb over the mountains uh, into Switzerland and into freedom. So here is the song, So Long, Farewell, by Rodgers and Hammerstein from Sound of Music. Thank you. Now I'd like to play the last movement of, um, of Robert Schumann's uh, final uh, um, piano cycle. Uh, he called it 
scenes of the forest, Waldzenen. There were nine movements, there are nine movements in it, and they portray not just the sort of thing that you might see in a, a forest, but also they indicate the great German romantic love of nature and uh, its beauties and uh, their awe in terms of its mystery. So it, th there's, for example, an entrance into the forest, there's a hunting scene, there's a oh, uh, wayside inn. Uh, um, there are several pieces that indicate something of the mysterious and uh, awe-inspiring nature of, of the forest. There's one called the uh, haunted spot, and another one um, called quite a wonderful, mysterious piece called the bird as prophet. Anyway, after these eight beautiful movements comes um, the final uh, departure movement, the uh, Abschied movement from this. It's believed that Schumann wrote all nine of these pieces uh, in the course of a couple days over New Year's of 1849. Anyway, a remarkable set of pieces, and from that I will now play Departure by Robert Schumann.
Thank you. Now I'd like to play um, a song that was part of the soundtrack of a movie pretty much um, forgotten, I believe. Um, the movie was called The Scarlet Hour, and the director of it was Michael uh, Kurtish, who directed many wonderful movies, uh, Casablanca and White Christmas, um, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Uh, but this apparently was not one of his finer efforts. However, it had on the soundtrack um, a song by J uh, Jay Livingston and Ray Evans that was sung by Nat King Cole. And that is indeed a wonderful song. And that's what I will play for you now. Um, it's Never Let Me Go, and uh, the arrangement is by Bert Edstrom.
Thank you. Now I'd like to play the first movement of Beethoven's uh, piano sonata number 26. It's in um, E flat. Uh, it has uh, the name most often uh, in performance of Les Adieux, a French name. Uh, that name was given to it by Beethoven's publisher and Beethoven protested against that name. Um, he said, Les Adieux, uh, literally, the adieus, uh, Les Adieux is what uh, a leader says to a group of followers, to a group of people. Uh, he said, the title of my sonata is Les Beaux. Uh, Les Beaux means something like fare thee well. And Beethoven said, that's what you, one friend says to another. The whole sonata uh, is in three movements, and each of the movements has a name. The first one, the one that I'll play for you, is uh, Das Lebewohl, the farewell. Then the second one is the absence, and the final movement is the return. Um, the sonata is dedicated to Beethoven's patron, and I have to say his friend, uh, the Archduke Rudolf. Um, Beethoven was famously difficult to be a friend to or to be a friend with, but probably the Archduke came closest. The uh, Archduke himself not only was his patron, but he was knowledgeable of, about music. He took composition lessons with, with uh, Beethoven. He endured all of Beethoven's uh, paranoia and suspicions and, and bad temper. So this sonata is dedicated to uh, uh, the Archduke. Over the first three notes of the sonata, the, the, the fr first three things that we hear are written the three syllables, lebe gold. And in fact, those three notes um, bind the entire sonata together. They occur over and over again. Uh, that's typical of late Beethoven, and that he seems to extract every bit of juice from the musical materials that he has, not only in terms of composition, but in terms of expression. At the very end of this movement, there's a wonderful effect where we hear the notes, which we could think of as a kind of a horn call for the Archduke's carriage. Uh, if we hear those notes echoing and then uh, farther and farther away, and then finally, um, like echoes, overlapping, uh, almost an impressionistic effect. Well, the Archduke left Vienna because it was 1809 and Napoleon was um, attacking Vienna. And so he left uh, Beethoven hiding in a basement with pillows over his ears to protect the last shreds of his hearing. I'm sure there's a good reason, but I haven't read it, why the Archduke did not take Beethoven with him when he left Vienna. But in any case, Beethoven was there to welcome him back and uh, composed this sonata in his honor. So here is the farewell movement from the sonata number 26 of Beethoven.
Thank you very much. Uh, uh, this concert is, I believe, the 26th of the concerts that I've given since the beginning of um, last year. And more than half of the time, uh, uh, Keith Clark, Keith Chase has been with uh, me recording and processing and setting up for all these concerts. So I'm deeply grateful uh, for that. Um, and many of you have been with me for all or most of those concerts. Um, I'm going to take a break after this concert for a couple weeks. Uh, I've been doing them every three w weeks for a year and a half. And it's time to take a little bit of vacation. I will be back, though, um, in November. And uh, hope to see you then. My final piece uh, is also a, a leave-taking piece. It was the 20th and last Beatles song that reached uh, number one hit parade status in the United States. It was written at the time when the uh, Beatles were coming apart as a group, the people's own lives had intruded so much that there was no uh, joy in making music together any longer. Uh, written by uh, Paul McCartney and written in uh, Scotland uh, where McCartney had a, a home and there was a road that road that went past his home wound up into the mountains and um, disappeared. And he was inspired there in Scotland to write the long and winding road. Um, after the Beatles uh, recorded it as part of their album, Let It Be, uh, um, the arranger, Phil Spector, was called in to uh, add some supporting tracks. Well, the arrangement that Spector made is quite elaborate. It has har two harps, it has string orchestra, it has a woman's chorus, um, and years later, uh, McCartney claimed that he never approved that arrangement, and he arranged to have another version of that album re released called Let It Be Naked, that has all of the Phil Spector arrangements stripped out and goes back to the original recording sessions. So um, lots of dispute about this. This is another arrangement. Um, by Brent Edstrom um, that I think is also um, very nice. So uh, um, uh, let me finish with uh, The Long and Winding Road and I will see you folks again, I hope, in November. <laughs>